Justin Houston of the Panthers. Like that one. Like that one. That's a good signing. I mean, there was the Panthers definitely had space for that extra edge rusher. Um, you know, Brian Branch, uh, Brian Branch, Brian Burns. Uh, on one side, legit, you know, edge threat. The other side, yeah, not so much. And I actually saw there were a couple of Panthers beat reporters who were like, this is a team crying out for a veteran edge rusher on the other side. Why haven't they made a move yet? And then, boom, there it is, Justin Houston. Who could still kind of play. I, I, yeah. I remember writing, uh, writing up uh, edge rusher free agent rankings four or five years ago and was writing up, ah, you know, end of his career. And he's still pretty good, still pretty good pass rusher. He's going to be more of a specialist. But I love this. I mean, throw Houston in the, you know, into that mix of guys that I would probably sign every single year. Until him and Melvin Ingram would be on my team every single year. I mean, he's he's basically the same age as Von Miller. It's just that he had like a bad year, relatively late, you know, in his run, like a lot sooner, and therefore sort of started this like the end stage cycle of the veteran edge rusher where your team looks to move on and then you become this sort of sequence of short-term rental type guys. Miller didn't have that for, I think, a longer stretch of time and then just went and signed a new big deal. Like, you know, when he came back, he was as dominant as ever. Justin Houston started to wobble and then became, you know, just his career there deviated from Von Miller's and went in a different direction. But the guy's basically the same age, and at his very, very best, was right up there with Von Miller. I think we probably, as a league, wrote off Justin Houston before it was time. So these years where he's essentially like a mercenary for hire as an edge rusher are still valuable. Yeah, he's also he's been eased into simpler roles later in his career. So last year with the Ravens, he was just a pass rush specialist, 306 pass rushes, only played against the run 93 times. He missed a few games in there, but 430 total snaps for him. 2021, 590 snaps, similar, pass rush specialist for the Ravens. Did the same thing with the Colts, pass rush specialist in 2020, uh, under 700 snaps. I think that's that's what you're getting, right? You're not, you probably don't want him playing that thousand snaps. Right. So I think Houston has settled into that world that I do like, again, when we write up free agent rankings every year, we're like, what do you do with this 30-something-year-old still productive guy? You know, where do you put him in free agent rankings? Because he's going to be a one-year guy, uh, but he's, he could still play. And every time I say sign the one-year guy, I say do it for 500 to 700 snaps and get the most out of him. That's what we've seen with Justin Houston. And his pass rush grades over the last couple of years have been good, 77 and 75. Still productive. And uh, you turn mo- gross motto- Matos opposite – Brian Burns in Carolina has not gotten the job done. I think Houston's going to be seeing a lot of time rushing the passer as long as he stays healthy. Yeah, I know. I think that's a really good signing. Like, that's one that makes an immediate impact for this team, hasn't cost the earth, and doesn't have to be a long-term commitment. So now Walt's predicting Carolina wins the NFC South. What are your thoughts there? The NFC South is wide open. Anybody could win it. You I could mean, say anybody, and I'd say, yeah. yeah. Right. Like I could see it. The Saints catapulted themselves to the the front of that queue as the favorite of the NFC South by getting good, capable, solid quarterback play in Derek Carr. There's absolutely no reason that Bryce Young can't hit that level right out of the box, like be that level immediately. And if he is, then you look at the two rosters. like Which level? A Derek Carr level. You think Bryce Young can step right in and be, say, QB 12 to 14 in the NFL. I'm saying there's Derek no Carr reason he can't be. Okay. Like, Bryce Young has that kind of ability. The, all the concern with Bryce Young is, well, what, do you, what if he gets hurt? Okay, but what if he doesn't? Like, what if he, even if he gets hurt in year three, what if the first two years are simply injury-free and you get Bryce Young? It's not the only concern. It was the principal concern the other concern is that his height's going to limit his potential his upside throwing over the middle the things that have hindered the other short quarterbacks recently like kyler murray and baker mayfield but what if he simply plays the way he's played in the sec in the nfl yeah i'm saying he could still be good i'm i don't think the only maybe your only concern was injury i don't know if the league's only concern was injury okay anyway my point being if you simply get bryce young in the nfl you are getting a guy who can absolutely give you play that rivals Derek Carr, at which point you go to the rosters and say, well, who's got a better roster, Carolina or New Orleans? It's pretty close. 